bring in nationally syndicated radio show host Dana Lash to talk about this potential breakthrough. See what she thinks. Hey, Dana. Hey, Shanna. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I'm going to put up on the screen so people can see um, some of the things that, you know, we talked about. We mentioned some of these um, mental health funding, school safety funding, um, federal laws, closing loopholes that are dangerous, the so-called boyfriend loophole, where you can prevent somebody who's married to or lives with someone in a domestic uh, violence situation from getting uh, a gun. But this boyfriend, girlfriend thing would be, it doesn't have to be that you live with this person, but you still have a threat in that relationship. A few other things. This is how... Um, it's being portrayed. Um, the Washington Post, in an opinion piece, says the willingness of Democrats and Republicans to negotiate and find agreement on an issue that is so deeply divided the two parties for so long is noteworthy and hopeful sign our government is not completely broken. Do you see it that way? Are there some things here you could go along with or no? There are, I think, some good directions when they talk about the mental, the mental health awareness and school security funding specifically. Now, it is kind of hard to judge exactly what we're going to get because we're just looking at the principle that they're kind of coming to get, like an outline, this mm -hmm. framework. So we don't have the legislative text just yet. But I will say this. I, I'm pleased that we're not immediately, we're not raising the age of purchase because that would be the denial of an enumerated right. And I think that that takes way more than just Congress, I mean, I, or passing a couple of laws in the Senate. I think you actually need to start the process of amending the Constitution mm -hmm. at that point. Um, but to the to the point where, and you'd mentioned the boyfriend loophole as well, there's there's certain vague, vagueness about this, about the, the framework that I have some questions on. The boyfriend loophole, um, kind, that's the Lautenberg Amendment. That was, uh, which d people who are convicted of domestic violence abuses are already considered prohibited possessors. But what the Lautenberg, Lautenberg Amendment does, that was something that was codified back in the 90s. They're trying to expand that to include any, not, not just not dating partner, whether it's a sexual relationship or not. And I think that there's a lot of questions that people have about civil liberties and the abuses by different partners, whether or not, you know, it's, it's, it's an ex, et cetera. Uh, as it concerns the red flag law, and this is the biggest, mm -hmm. the biggest concern that a lot of Second Amendment, you know, people who just exercise their Second Amendment have. The red flag law, now this is sidestepping the Tenth Amendment on this. I know that there were some issues with that with the Brady background, uh, the background check bill in the 90s with Prince the U.S. Um, I think that they smartly sidestepped relitigating that whole issue again by incentivizing states to adopt this. Shannon, 19 states so far have red flag laws. They, there isn't actually any evidence to show that they have decreased any kind of you know, criminal activity, mass casualty incidents. That's something that I'm sure that they're going to try to whittle down as they the details on this. I just have concerns because it is the removal of due process. Yeah, and you are essentially punishing someone. They're, they're guilty until they prove themselves right. innocent in a court and of so, law. Yeah. Yeah, in some of these states, they do take the firearm before there's ever a hearing, and that is the big difference, whether they're going right. to be talking about red, red flag laws where there is a hearing, the person who is accused is able to either go represent themselves or have representation there. Those are two different things. Um, the Federalist right. asking about this with the, with the red flag laws says, ask this, will Senate Republicans guarantee that funding for state laws is contingent on laws that have protections for basic due process rights or penalties for bringing right. frivolous or false charges against gun owners? because that could be abused too. Here's what Senator Cornyn, who's been the lead right. Republican negotiating on this, here's what he says about the red flag laws. 16 states have red flag laws, Texas does not. And they certainly shouldn't miss out on access to those resources for crisis intervention. It's absolutely critical that each and every one of those includes protection that comes from due process of law and particularly when it comes to the rights of law-abiding gun owners. So you've got 10 Senate GOP um, you know, folks who are supporting this, and, and Cornyn is leading the charge on that. Are you confident that he will make sure there are due process protections or say, we don't have a deal? I, I would love to. I would love to to not have to worry about it. And Senator Cornyn is going to be on my radio program Wednesday, and we're going to have mm, a, a big conversation about this. Yeah, I have a million questions to ask Senator, Senator Cornyn. And, and a quick note that it's interesting, the 10 Republicans that are actually for, uh, joining with the 10 Democrats on this, none of them are in the election cycle. Right. Of them, four of them are retiring and mm -hmm. six aren't even, yeah. So it's very interesting that they're not going to be penalized for any decisions in the next cycle. Uh, but to the protections offered, the way that it's current, the, the, what we know, it looks like it's a mashup of Lindsey Graham's bill with Richard Blumenthal from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was very critical of the absence of protections in that because first off, you're, you're looking 
looking at deprivation hearings, which you're supposed to be having if you're removing from someone their constitutional rights. So far, these 19 states, we don't have anything like that. Furthermore, there's no uh, standards on what kind of evidence is going to be offered. Is it imminent danger, clear? And, and I mean, there's, yeah. there's a lot of questions about those standards. Yeah, and furthermore, too, a court-appointed lawyer, you, usually these people have to prove themselves innocent in a court of law at their own expense. Yeah, it, it, like you said, everything is in the details. We will see as this get hammered out because that is the proof is in the pudding yeah. here in Washington when they get down to brass yeah. tacks. Yeah. All right, Dana, we will listen for that interview yeah. on Wednesday. Thanks for dropping in. Thanks, Shannon. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.